Remove the default cube in the light source. Add a torus mesh into the viewport. Increase the minor radius to 0.5. Go to front view, select the camera and press Ctrl plus Alt and numpad 0 to align the camera to the scene. Change the Y axis location of the camera. Increase the focal length value of the camera 200 mm. Add a simple deform modifier to the torus mesh and increase the angle value to 360 degree. Add a subdivision surface modifier and increase the render value to 6. Select the torus mesh and press R twice to get a desired look. Select the camera and change its Y axis location. Apply Shade Smooth. Add a plane mesh to the viewport. Uh, move it downwards in Z axis and then scale it. Then go to Edit Mode, then Edge Select. Select the desired edge and extrude it along Z axis. After that, add a bevel modifier to it with amount to 1 and segments to 10. Apply Shade Smooth. Switch the render engine from EV to Cycles. Select CPU or GPU. Enter viewport and render max samples to 32 and 128. In the color management, change view transform to standard and look to very high contrast. Reduce world color to all the way dark. Go to render mode. Add an area light to the viewport and move it upwards in z-axis. Go to area light properties and increase the power of the light and change the shape to disk. Increase the power and the size of the area light similarly as shown in the video. Duplicate the area light. Change its power value and move it to a different location pointing towards the main subject. Make sure to follow the tutorial step by step so you get a better lighting in the scene. Similarly, duplicate the area light again and point it over to the main subject from a different angle. Make changes to the power value and the location and rotation value of the area light source uh, unless you are satisfied by the final result. Now for shading the scene, head over to Shader Editor. Select the torus mesh and press new to add a new material. Add a displacement node and join it to the displacement in the material output. Add a Voronoi texture node and join distance to height. Reduce the scale value to 0.4. Add a wave texture and join it to Voronoi texture. Switch from X to Z axis and reduce the scale value to 2. Press Ctrl plus T to get the texture coordinate plus mapping node. Increase the subsurface value to 1. And increase the specular value to 1. Increase the first value of the subsurface radius. In material properties under settings, switch from bump only to displacement only. Join the distance in the Voronoi texture to its subsurface color. Add a color ramp node and switch from linear to constant. Add a few colored stops to the color ramp and change their position and color respectively as shown in the video. Join the color ramp to the emission socket in the principal BSDF shader. Join the distance in the Voronoi texture to the color ramp.
you can also change the color in the color ramp to a different color of your choice select the background mesh and uh, add a new material increase metallic and specular to 1 and reduce roughness to 0.4 select the top area light and make changes to its position and rotation value Beside this, you can also make changes to the power and the size value of the area light to get some significant amount of change. Now let's render out the image to see the final result. Thank you so much to everyone for watching the video. If you found the video useful, do drop a like, subscribe the channel and don't forget to add your valuable comment. Hope to see you all in the next video. Till then stay tuned and keep learning.